What is going on, everyone? How are you? So on the back table, there are uh, some articles entitled, What is Genocide? <clears throat> now, you probably know definition of genocide. Probably did a little work with that, with the vocabulary words from this article. But today we're going to read about half of it. And uh, tomorrow there will be a Google form that you can fill out to prove that you've read this and you have a somewhat of an understanding of this article and also the uh, the two videos that we've watched about the Rwandan uh, genocide. I'm going to ask you just <clears throat> write a paragraph in your own words, summarizing some of the details about the uh, Rwandan genocide. Okay. Shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Um, you know, I think we watched like 20 minutes of video and stuff like that. So if you could just put that into a paragraph, mention Hutu and Tutsi and all that stuff. But today we're going to talk about just genocide in general. <clears throat> what is that? Where did the term come from? And then we'll talk really quickly about a few of the genocides, including the Rwandan. But this is going to be sl split up into two parts. <clears throat> the article is not that long, though, luckily. Uh, it's just maybe my voice won't hold up. I don't know. Where is the article? Right here. <clears throat> so... If you, uh, when I, before I read, I was like, just, okay, how long is this thing? Eh, not too bad. So if we split it up into two, I mean, it'd be like less than 10 minutes for each. So here's the title. What is genocide? A word first used after World War II. And then we have this, um, in my opinion, an adorable little girl. She's only five. Like, oh, so my eyes are <clears throat> automatically drawn to her at first. And I looked at this picture a couple times because I've already read this um, article. But I didn't really pay too much attention to what was surrounding her. But you can see that it looks like coffins to me. So um, I am not going to be able to say these last names correctly. So I will probably forget them. And I've... Um, you know, encourage you to do that too. Like when you get a test like the SATs or STAR or NWAs or whatever, <clears throat> MEA, so many different acronyms for tests, right? Do not get bogged down by, um, you know, really difficult words to pronounce. Just kind of keep them in your head somewhere. So you're like, okay, I, I recognize that. And if you're asked a question about it, you'll be able to, uh, to do okay. So here we go. We got Emma, little five-year-old girl. She's a Bosnian Muslim girl. We're going to talk about uh, Yugoslavia and the genocide that went on there. Pays her respects near the coffin of her uncle in the Serbica. I know that's like from the word Serbia. Serbica. Genocide Memorial in Bosnia, Herzegovina. July 9th, 2014. More than 20 years after Bosnia's war. So this will take place in the mid 90s, early to mid 90s. <clears throat> Rodovan Karadzic, uh, yeah, K, okay. <clears throat> in 2016 was sentenced to 40 years in prison. UN judges delivered verdicts in his genocide and war crimes trial for the acts he ordered as supreme lead commander of the Bosnian Serb armed forces. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to find out um in Bosnia, well, it's it's Yugoslavia, and then you have uh, Serbia. It's gonna, it's a really complicated. We're gonna try to narrow it down when we get to that part, but um, it kind of boils down to um, Muslims who were um, killed. They did not have weapons. The army of uh, Serbia had the weapons. <clears throat> so you can see this is a ninth grade text. You know, getting very close to ninth grade, so I thought, let's do grade nine right here. We can handle it since we're uh, reading it together. Genocide is violence against members of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. The intent of genocide is to destroy all or part of the group. This term came into general use only after World War II when the full extent of the horrors committed by the German Nazis against the Jews of Europe was known. In 1948, the United Nations declared genocide to be an international crime. 
The term would later be applied to the violence committed during conflicts in the former Yugoslavia and the African country of Rwanda in the 1990s. An international treaty signed by about 120 countries in 1998 established the International Criminal Court, or the ICC. It has the authority to prosecute genocide crimes. So the ICC, if you're wondering what that is, it's like just combine those two sentences. It has the authority to prosecute genocide crimes. Uh, let's uh, Let's just read this next part, and then we'll be done for today, okay? Polish Jewish lawyer coins the term. So you probably know uh, coins is a uh, little silver, copper things in your pocket. I don't think they're real silver or copper. But you can also use the word uh, coin as to like name it. The word genocide came from Raphael Lemkin. He was a Polish Jewish lawyer who fled the Nazi occupation of Poland and arrived in the United States in 1941. As a boy, Lemkin learned of the Turkish massacre of hundreds of thousands of Armenians during World War I. That's another genocide we will talk about briefly. Spend a couple days on that. As an adult, he wanted to come up with a term to describe Nazi crimes against European Jews during World War II. He wanted to enter that term into the world of international law in hopes of preventing and punishing such horrific crimes against innocent people. In 1944, he coined the term genocide by combining the Greek word for race or tribe with the Latin suffix to kill. And we've talked about that briefly right here. Side, that is the Latin suffix to kill. Homicide, suicide, those kind of things. In 1945, the term genocide was included in the charter of the International Military Tribunal in Germany. We've learned about that <clears throat> tribunal. Why is the whole thing? Now I can't un. I, now I can't un. All right, what's going on here? <clears throat> All right, almost done here, and I think my voice is almost done. So we just got to deal with this blue thing. I wanted to only highlight that tribunal in Germany. This court <clears throat> tried top Nazi officials for crimes against humanity. That's a term you might often hear when talking about genocide, crimes against humanity, which included included persecution on racial, religious, or political grounds. It also included inhumane acts committed against civilians, including genocide. After the trials revealed the horrible extent of Nazi crimes, the UN General Assembly made the crime of genocide punishable under international law in 1946. All right. That is enough of that article. Hopefully everything's recording and all that stuff. That was weird how uh, that seized up on me. All right. um, One thing um, to remember is like we all know, or you could research if you wanted to, just the horrific things the Nazis did to people who were in concentration camps. We'll talk about that later. But um, at the time, you don't know the horrific things that are going on. Like if you were living in 1944 in the United States, think about didn't have social media, things like that. So it was during these trials or it was during when American troops were liberating these concentration camps that the true horror of what went on was actually known. Because before then, there were some rumors. I'm like, no, this couldn't possibly happen. Come on. Not in Europe. In the 1940s, people living at that time, they were like, but this could not be possible. So a lot of times, you know, with Ukraine and Russia, thanks to social media and the press and how information can travel so quickly, if anything horrible is going on, hopefully it will be known within a couple days or a couple weeks. But oftentimes, it's hindsight. It's looking back. And realizing, just like with 9-11, before then, I mean, the world was totally different. Running a plane into a building full of people, like, the world had never seen that. Now we live in that world where that that is possible, and we haven't seen it again, just because we know that could happen. So a lot of times, the first, like, the horrible thing 
has to happen and then the world can try to prevent it as much as possible. So, all right, that's enough for today. Adios.